My name is Kayla Spelling. I'm a Kentucky girl with wild hair and green eyes who's not just a photographer and videographer, but a midnight designer too. I'm a visual storyteller with a creative spirit that knows no bounds. As a creative junkie and Aquarian sun, my love for all things creative runs deep. Being a visual storyteller for over a decade has allowed me to work with some seriously impressive clients across all spectrums, fueling my desire to learn and explore how people experience the world. What do they have in common? They all live and breathe their passions. So inspired by their experiences, I launched a podcast to hear theirs and other stories on how they broke the nine to five mold and pursued their true purpose in life. My goal is to empower listeners with knowledge and inspire them to live their most authentic and fulfilling life by following their passions. Join me on a journey where we'll explore spiritualism, consciousness, writing, culinary arts, tattooing, music, travel, media, and so much more. As an Aquarius, I know that I'm full of surprises, but one thing's for sure. We're in for a crazy journey into this world of creative junk. Hello, everybody. Here I am introducing Creative Junk's very first episode. Yes. Get ready to be inspired as we dive into conversations with people who are living their passions. The idea for this podcast started brewing a few years ago, but fairly recently, the pieces have fallen into place, and here we are. And even a psychic reading confirmed that this was meant to be. So, Buckle up, join me as we delve into the captivating conversations with friends and clients who are truly living their dreams. In this very first episode, I am so thrilled to have my dear friend Sissy Dinkle joining us all the way from Nashville. Sissy is a talented bass player and musician, and we have some incredible stories to share. Now, I do have to warn you, the audio quality isn't perfect just yet. I've been working on it, so please rest assured that future episodes should have much better sound. Learning and improving, you know, it's all part of the journey, so thank you for being patient. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Sissy. She's not only a gifted musician, but also a delightful human being. Hailing from Virginia Beach, she has made Nashville her home since 2015. With a master's degree in music performance from Berkeley, Valencia, Sissy is a full-time bassist and vocalist constantly touring and performing both locally and internationally. Keep an eye out for her upcoming five-song EP with her original music project, Bull Shark. Did I mention that she's an amazing cook? Oh, and her favorite color is yellow. But enough with the chit-chat. Let's dive right into our conversation with the incredible Sissy Dinkle. I am so excited for you to be here. And you should know... You are my first interview. <gasps> really? Yeah. Like ever? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It just worked out with uh, all the scheduling and stuff that you just happened to be the first one. So that is so exciting. Yes. So it's such an honor for me that you're here hanging out before we get started. Well, we kind of already got started, but I just thought this would be a really great memory to talk about with us. <laughs> so. Uh-huh. I was thinking the other day when I was uh, just kind of going through what I was going to ask you and stuff and the memory of Dublin popped in my head and like how when we (laughs) when we had a lovely evening drinking and then we got back to the place that we were staying and then we suddenly had to be uprooted and forced to take our luggage and to walk for God knows how long in Dublin. Oh my God. And (laughs) I just remember you and I were like looking at each other like, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I know. So I honestly, I remember that trip as like, so like, I've been kind of like, I've been in therapy for a few years. Yeah. And one thing I've been working on is like, realizing that I'm feeling a feeling, yeah. <laughs> which sounds stupid. It's but not. honestly, like, I um, remember that trip as like the first time I ever consciously remember feeling angry (laughs) yeah like in my whole life 2015 we were in our hotel in Ireland and I just was like ready to murder and I had to go in the bathroom and call my friend at like 3 a.m and I was like I think that I am not good I think that I'm not okay (laughs) 
Yeah. I just remember you and I both, because we stuck in the back, because we were like, fuck this, you know? And we're fuck just this. Still, yeah. We were so pissed, because we were feeling good. Like, I remember I was on a great level. We had fun at a pub. So I was yeah. like, I don't care what this place is like. As long as there's a blanket, I'm just going to, like, crash yeah. it, you know? But no, that wasn't good enough. So here oh we are having to, like, pull this luggage. And I just remember, like, passing all these kebab places where like oh my god food. <laughs> yeah i honestly i feel like i blanked out most of the <laughs> you probably did you're like i'm so over this i'm done yeah sorry i think that my brain just was like i can't remember anything that <laughs> no it's okay well the reason i bring it up though too is i feel like we've just had so we just the few encounters that we've had together have been just so interesting um but they <laughs> i've just cherished them in some ways like even just like a random like you had to come back with me when we went like we were going back to nashville so you had to like coming from kentucky you're riding in my jeep that was like yeah super just rough and it could have broken down but we're like whatever and like we just yeah. loved it you know we rolled down the windows and just mm -hmm. played some tunes and we yeah just had a that good was time. fun so um, kind of just beginning, um, just tell, tell our listeners, cause I know you, but I'm um, also, it's, yeah. been, it's been a few years. So, yeah. um, tell our listeners, uh, just who you are and kind of like your background a little bit of how you got started in music. All right. Well, I am Sissy Dinkle. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I am a full-time bass player and singer for other people's bands. And then I'm also... Um, in the process of recording my first like EP for my own project, which is exciting. Um, so yeah, I just do music full time in like several different capacities. And I started in music um, as like a kid. Um, I come from a really musical family. So I grew up learning music the same time I was learning English, you know, just like, yeah, it was never something that I ever really feel like I learned it was just something that always just was a part of my life you know yeah so yeah that was kind of like the beginning and, and like moving from there um I went to I was homeschooled from sixth grade until I graduated and then um I was technically homeschooled but I went to like an enrichment program thing like two days a week um, which was like a music school. So I took like choir and band and orchestra and all that stuff and private lessons at this like music school from sixth grade through high school. And then I went on to music college and everything and then came to Nashville from there. So why bass? What was it about the bass guitar that just drove you to it? Um, well, I actually started on the upright bass um, which I still play. And I got one when I was in the eighth grade because there had been a family um, at the church that I grew up going to. And the youngest son was like a prodigy on the violin. And when he was seven, they moved from Virginia to Indiana so that he could study at the University of Indiana. <laughs> Wow. Um, which, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, his older brother played the upright bass. And when they moved, he left his bass like backstage at our church. And it stayed back there for like eight years or something. And they were just going to throw it away. Like it had gotten broken and everything. And my yeah. mom heard like that they were going to throw it away. So she took it and spent like 800 bucks to get it fixed. And my brother started playing it and he didn't like it. And I was like, well, I'll play. <laughs> and so I started taking lessons and in my first lesson I went through like three or four books and I was just like it just like made sense to me you know just felt and right. then yeah yeah and the role that the bass plays in bands and orchestras and stuff just like felt like what I wanted to be yeah there's um my dad has this really funny quote that he says periodically and it's like uh, coffee and bass players make the world go round. And it's like, you're so right, though. Yeah. It's kind of true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was kind of like the bass found me. But then I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. This is what I'm supposed to do. And then um, I got a bass, an electric bass for my 15th birthday, I think. And it was just one of those like $200 starter packs that came with like the amp and the bass and the gig bag and all the yeah, cables, yeah. For, you know, so it was just like not good quality at all. But um, 
I would just like take my orchestra music home and learn how to play it on my bass guitar, like figuring out the frets and everything and the notes. And that's kind of how I started playing electric bass. But I went to college as a vocal major and my teacher was like the worst. And so I quit. (laughs) Um, And the only other thing I was good enough at was the bass to major in. Um, and that was like, so my sophomore year of college was really my first like electric bass lesson, but it was like, I had a teacher who was like, um, for like the first teacher I've ever had that was like, so what are your goals? Like, what do you want to learn? Like, what do you want to know? Like, what do you want to do? And he just taught me that. Um, <laughs> that that little leg. I know. <laughs> uh, for our listeners, uh, Sissy has her cat Kit in her arms, which is so cute, and Kit's just living life, stretching her little paws, I'm retching. Yeah, it's just kicking so me precious. in the face. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of how I uh, was able to find, for the first time, like my own kind of voice and like think about what I actually wanted and my own goals and then having somebody like support me in that and um that was the bass guitar for me which is now what I do full time yeah that's awesome so uh, this is this is not a loaded question this is actually a very genuine question because you went to Berkeley so do you feel that it was worth you going there um for like learning music and like a music kind of based college Um, I feel complicated about that question. Because I think that um, it's for me personally, like, yes, I do think that it was worth it for me um, to go as far as like the experiences that I had and the people that I met. um, Because I came from like, a very sheltered background. um, And had no real concept of what the greater like music industry outside of like church industry was like um but I have never had any desire to ever like work in a church or for the church at all and so I was just kind of like thrown into the water and see if I could swim sort of Um, so for me, it was almost like an acclimation period of like, okay, detox from all this stuff you've been learning. And like, let's actually learn about things that happen in the world. And like, so I feel like on a lot of levels for me, it was less about like learning music and more about learning the world and learning industry and like learning about literally anything other than the church and church music and church culture and stuff. Yeah. Um, so that was something that was really invaluable for me that like, I still like when I got to Nashville, I still definitely felt behind the eight ball in a lot of ways. And I still do. And I think I always will, but like, you know, I would have felt way more unprepared than I did. Um, if I hadn't gone to Berkeley Um, but all of that to say, like, for people that didn't grow up in, like, Christian extremism, (laughs) I don't, I don't know if, um, it would necessarily be worth it, especially if you're a person who is really self-motivated and driven and, like, you just really love to play, like, just go play because you're gonna get the same education, but you're also gonna get the real life experience and also not be in crippling debt. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think you're, you're right to where it's, it's really, what is it that you need and what's going to be better for you? You know, cause there's some people where they have to have that structure in their life. So maybe college is really important for them. And like, obviously for someone like you, it was a great introduction into, Oh, so this is a different kind of life than, Oh, this, here's some adulting going on, not fully, but adulting, you know, sprinkled in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I, I was just kind of curious because also like being in Nashville, you know, like Belmont is a huge music college and stuff. And I remember working at the record label. We had a lot of like interns and stuff from Belmont and stuff working there. And I, I do see benefits of it because, yeah, you get like great internships. Like if, if you're wanting to work in the music industry, like especially mm-hmm. on like the business end or marketing end, that's really great in terms of the like 
playing or you know producing I, I don't really know um I'm not yeah. really sure about that but I was just curious from you going to a school that had the focus of music you know mm -hmm. like what your thoughts are with that yeah well and I also went to Berkeley for my master's too so I didn't go for my undergrad I went to like a small Christian private school in Pennsylvania okay. for my undergrad um so yeah that's kind of what I mean it's like I went from Christian, private Christian middle school, private Christian high school, private Christian undergrad with no desire to work in the church at all to like getting one and a half years outside of Christianity for the first time ever in my life in my mid twenties to be like, oh, got it. Okay. This is what being a person is like. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and then from there, it was like, I moved straight to Nashville and I was like straight back into the Bible Belt, straight back into all of it. And it was like, if I hadn't had that like moment of fresh breathing, like, I don't know, I don't know who I would be today, honestly. Yeah. Well, that kind of takes me to my next question um, with the music industry can be stressful, right? So <laughs> as a, <laughs> as you know. So, uh, yeah, like as a performer, you know, what obstacles have you run into just kind of pursuing your field or just playing and like being in Nashville and how are, how have you like overcome some of those obstacles for yourself? Yeah. Um, that's, this question is coming at an interesting time. I, uh, had therapy this morning, so <laughs> my brain is just kind of like in, in this space right now. Um. But yeah, I um it's interesting to navigate a lot of that stuff because it's like when what you love and what feeds your soul creatively is also your job, that can be a very beautiful thing, but that can also be a very like emotionally confusing and overwhelming thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it's yeah. like this is like this is what I want to do to help myself feel better, but this is also what's making me feel overwhelmed and I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's like, well, you know, where's the line? And also it's like, okay, I have to pay my bills this month. Um, so what do I need to do to make sure that I can do that? Yeah. Even though, you know, I don't know. I'm not feeling creative today. You know, it doesn't matter. I still have to do it. Something that I've run into is like, I um, I was with an artist for like seven years. Um, and she's still one of my best friends. Like I just called her today. But it was like not fulfilling my goals. Like her her gig wasn't like fulfilling the goals I had for my career anymore. And like, you know, I just kind of like came to s different conclusions about some stuff. And it just like, I didn't feel like I was the right fit for her group anymore. And her group didn't feel like it was the right fit for me anymore. Um, And so I quit, which really helped me feel relieved in a lot of ways. And I feel like my career has like grown a lot in a lot of ways in the past like two or three months and it has in the past several years. Um, which has been really encouraging. I mean, I've got to do a lot more cool stuff and like a lot of people have seemed really like interested and like wanting me to play with them, which has felt really like validating and encouraging and everything. But on the other side of that coin is like, I just gave up um, from like a nine to five standpoint. It's like, that was a lot of consistent gigs every yeah. week that I had been budgeting on for like years and years and years that I don't have anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That security. So yeah. yeah. And so now it's like, you know, for all of her shows, it's like, I didn't have to do any work. I could just show up and I already knew all of her repertoire. I already knew the whole show frontwards and backwards. I always, you know, I already knew everything. So I didn't have to do any work for it really other than like, putting on makeup and getting to the gig. Um, whereas now every single show I'm playing is 45 minutes to two to three hours of brand new material that I have to learn. Usually people don't give you charts, so I have to transcribe everything. I have to like learn all this new stuff all the time. I have to go to rehearsals, at least one to two to three rehearsals per show. Yeah. And I still have to make enough money to pay my bills, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I feel like I'm doing a lot more stuff 
that is making me feel more creative and fun and inspired. But it's also like the volume of work that I have to do is so much more that it's like, I'm just so overwhelmed and tired and just like, can't catch a break. Yeah. So like balancing, balancing the gigs that will pay you versus the gigs that you like that don't pay you versus making enough money versus feeling fulfilled and creative it's like very hard to strike a balance oh yeah I feel like I am in the same boat in a sense because I I moved to Belgium which is oh yeah which we can talk about later um wow yeah and so for here one of my good friends lives in Belgium you should link up with her oh yeah she her name's Claise she runs the opera I think there in um Antwerp that's amazing. I would love to get her info. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and come visit us, clearly. Like, I want here. to. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, moving here, I had to make a decision when it came to my design, whether it was, do I do, do I just go freelance and do I just like start my own business here and do that and do like the hustle and, you know, the, the grind of like getting new clients and stuff like that. And, worrying, you know, not having that consistent security or, you know, do I get like a steady job here? And like, I I really spent a couple of months just kind of weighing on that and had a lot of anxiety over it. And it really just came down to, I, I needed that freedom. Like I needed that freedom to work when I need to work and be able to work wherever I need to work. And to work on the projects that I want to work on, like the clients that I want to work on or work with, I should say. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I decided to, whatever, here we go. Nut up or shut up. Like, let's just do this. (laughs) But yeah, I'm, I'm the same where it's like, it's been fulfilling in so many ways and I'm able to like really create and do some really cool things like this podcast. But um, it's also the, the hustle of every month being like, okay, um, I've got to try to make X, Y, and Z. Uh, so, all right. And I have this client and this client, I really need to pick up another job. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's stressful. I totally get it. Experience pure magic and rejuvenation with Wicked Obscura, a women-owned apothecary and candle shop in Covington, Kentucky. As one of the owners of this company, I can assure you that we believe in the power of nature and spiritual well-being, which we infuse in every handmade item that we offer. Our candle selection made of coconut soy and infused with herbs and crystals give off an unforgettable scent while promoting a peaceful atmosphere. With Woodwicks and 100% safe ingredients, our candles provide a touch of magic in every home. Don't miss out on this special offer. Use code CREATIVELYWICKED at checkout to snag 15% off your next purchase and experience the true essence and light of Wicked Obscura. Start shopping now at wickedobscura.com. Use code CREATIVELYWICKED at checkout to snag that 15% off. that I had we're going to get into some more fun things in a minute um but one thing I did want to ask you was being a female musician um just kind of talk about that and like your experience with that like have you for the most part had like pretty positive experiences being like a female musician or have you run into any obstacles um with you know other other genders of (laughs) playing with them in the studio you know I don't know like have you had any issues with that in the past um yes I have um but I mean for the most part it's honestly been really good um I feel really thankful to have a lot of very supportive very respectful very talented men in my life that I get to work with So I do feel really thankful and lucky that I have a lot of very, very good friends and um, colleagues and stuff in that regard where like, I generally feel very, very much respected. Awesome. Um, Not just as respected as a woman, but like respected as a player and respected as like a member of my community and stuff. Yeah. Um, So and I never I, I rarely feel like um differentiated from 
the people that I'm playing with, like if I'm the only woman in the band or the only person who's not like male presenting in the band or something, um, I, I like rarely feel that matters at all. Um, or like that anybody's thinking about that at all, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's cool. Um, that has been good and I feel thankful about that. Um, but I mean, yeah, I definitely have felt, um, othered in some ways i mean like the most recent example i can think of is like a few weeks ago um i was out with this artist playing upright bass for um like a rockabilly band Mm -hmm. (laughs) and we were playing at this like festival thing in uh illinois i think it was just kind of like an example of the subtle nuanced differences in the way that people can interact with someone who is a stranger and sometimes it's fine and sometimes it's literally not fine at all. Yeah. And um, there was this one guy in the audience who was like just staring at me the whole time and it was fine and he, I guess he went back to the... um like the merch table and got a sharpie and somebody wrote marry me sissy on his stomach and he walked up and like lifted his shirt up and (laughs) and it was so funny and it was hilarious and then after we were done he came up to me and you know we talked and he was like yeah Yeah. it's gonna make you laugh like whatever and it was fine like it wasn't creepy like he we talked and he talked to me like a little bit too long and i was like okay dude like i don't want to talk to you anymore yeah but um (laughs) It was never, I never felt like it was fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it was weird, but it was fine. But um, there was the photographer for the event, um, just this fucking old guy. Yeah. And like, I was not the, it's like a female fronted band. So I wasn't the only woman in the band. Also, this was my first show with this band who I'm not a member of. And everyone else in the band is like members of this group and play regularly. And but this photographer was like barely taking pictures of anyone else. Was like up in my face. Was like like leaning over the stage, like reaching oh. to get. But the worst part was he was like yelling at me while we're playing like hey hey look at me look at me oh, why are you smiling dude i'm playing and would, yeah and like <laughs> i i had left my ipad at home on accident and so i had to look at my charts on my cell phone which is small i this is my second gig ever playing rockabilly bass in my life which is really hard to play like the style is hard and i was trying to learn the songs i was trying to play i was trying to interact with the band i was trying to see the cues i was trying to watch yeah. what was going on and this guy's like yelling at me to smile at him and like trying to get me to like pose and oh. look at him and i was like what the fuck Dude, are you the time. and yeah and i kept messing up and he was like really throwing me off and i was playing like badly because he was just really trying to take pictures of me for a spank bank like oh god it was just yeah. so uncomfortable and and like not taking pictures of anyone else really yeah um to the point where like we got to our last song and he was still yelling at me and I just like stopped playing and looked straight at him and was like smile like what the yeah. fuck do you want from me and the band was like why aren't you playing I was like Cause this fucking guy won't leave me alone like yeah. he wants me to pose and smile like we're having a photo shoot so I'm gonna pose and smile like we're having a photo shoot and stop the show because this jackass won't leave me alone <sighs> Ugh, it was like the worst and then like he had the audacity to come up to me after the show and show me a picture of me like clearly uncomfortable smiling at him oh, was like see God. how see how good you look smiling at me like why couldn't you just smile at me the whole time and Ugh. i was like why didn't you go tell fucking evil steve to smile yeah bro? right <laughs> like why are you telling me to smile like i don't smile when i'm playing i'm you know exactly so stuff like that definitely happens like a lot but it's rarely like the other musicians i'm playing with because if i don't like you like i won't play with you (laughs) yeah exactly no i mean that's awesome Um, that's really good but yeah but it's like i don't know but it still does happen like stuff like that it's like out of your control and you just feel so uncomfortable and just like i don't know it's just embarrassing 
yeah stuff like that because well, it's especially like I'm you're just... you're working like you're trying you're working a job and you're trying to play and be in the moment and then you have this asshole just invading your space and you were already uncomfortable to begin with you know with him and then a place where you're you are supposed to feel safe you know on the stage and yeah. like doing your thing and then yeah it's just such a oh icky situation thankfully it does not happen very often but it definitely does yeah mm. happen <laughs> Something yeah like that. so do you play any other instruments I do I do um so I sing as well as play bass I play upright and electric um and then I also play the baritone guitar oh nice um yeah which is what I play for my project that I do um so but then you know I play other instruments kind of but the only ones that I would say like professionally like I would be comfortable to be hired to play would be bass and baritone and vocals yeah no that's awesome um I, I wasn't sure because obviously I've always known you as a bass player but also being a musician I know you guys a lot of times will start picking up other instruments especially like when you're uh, working on like recording some stuff of your own, you may pick up like, you know, get borrow a keyboard or, you know, something just mm -hmm. to kind of tinker. So I wasn't sure yeah. if you pick something up. Yeah. So actually, um, piano was my first instrument and my like major for a long time. And when I was in high school, I actually was like scholarshiped, um, on piano t for like, um, accompanying people's private lessons and stuff. Wow. Look at you. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. And when I, when I dropped out of the vocal program, my first year of college, I almost uh, went into being a piano major, but like, mm -hmm. I just knew that I did not have the dedication to be like yeah. a classical pianist. Like I yeah. did not want to do that. Um, so I went with bass instead, but yeah. So piano, um, I do love to play the piano, but I don't, as far as like synths and stuff go, like I just have no idea about any of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, no. So to yeah. be like a keyboardist for someone's band, I'm like, I don't know about all the sounds and stuff, but I can yeah. read some sheet music if you give me some. Yeah, nowadays, like there's no way. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know. So I do want to know more about like the, the style of music or the type of music that you like creating. Cause you briefly mentioned, you know, working with that other artist and you had worked with her for over seven years and stuff like that, which was a really fun experience for you and everything. But then you mentioned that, you know, it was just getting to a point where it wasn't fulfilling really for you because you weren't able to really create and, you know, create the, the music or play the music that you were wanting to play. So what, Tell me about that. Like, tell me more just kind of about what you've been creating lately, like the project that you've been working on and the the style of music, you know, what's been inspiring you with that project? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I feel like my style that I write and myself as an artist is like very different from myself and my career and style as a bass player. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, yeah, so the stuff that I really love to play bass is like, um, I play a lot of, like soul neo soul r and b um yeah <laughs> yes, yes kid yes <laughs> uh, what's up? um a lot of stuff like that just like really groovy kind of stuff yeah like bluesy soul kind of or like motown even yeah just like old school really like groovy stuff is like what i love to play on the bass so i've been playing with several artists that are like in the different like niches of soul like one of them is very like Aretha Franklin love it soul and then or like Sade kind of stuff and then like another artist is very like Susan Tedeschi kind of blues soul or like almost like D'Angelo kind of soul type mm -hmm. stuff so it's like a lot of different like facets of soul because um I feel like it's a very like wide genre. So that's been really fun. But then like the stuff that I play or like the stuff that I write is more like indie rock kind of singer songwriter -y type stuff. Like if you ever heard of the band called Soccer Mommy or uh -huh. Snail, Snail Mail is another one. Um, Wednesday, kind of just like, 
Or even like Turnstile is a band that I really love. They're a little bit heavier than what the stuff I write, but like, you know, something like that could, I could see as like a direction I would go. So it's like very, very different than Aretha Franklin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's kind of funny because like, I feel like I've always struggled with that because it's like I listen to such like a wide range of stuff like uh, I'll listen to like Never Meant by American Football and then I'll turn around and listen to like The Vanguard or like any kind of like Black Messiah by D'Angelo or something and it's like I want to be in both of these bands yeah 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 <laughs> um but I never learned how to play bass, like, in that, in the, like, kind of, like, a rock style. Um, or, like, with a pick or different, I'm, like, so new to, like, even the idea of, like, working on my tone or, like, using any kind of pedal, you know, like, my boyfriend Justin is, like, very into tone and very, like, smart and knowledgeable about like different guitar pedals and companies and all that how how they work and everything so like the only reason I have any pedals at all is because of him and like yeah yeah, and like him teaching me um so you know I feel like I'm slowly getting into being more versatile as a bass player in that way but it's like I've I feel like I have two completely segmented careers like one is kind of like DIY indie rock band and one is like playing in theaters and going on tour and making money and playing soul music yeah band so (laughs) it's kind of it's kind of funny um how it kind of worked out like that but yeah that's kind of like the main styles that I like to do I guess so you're when I was looking up uh you were mentioning like your band bull shark so can you tell me a little bit more about that like that project that you're doing yeah, so um, my band is called Bull Shark, like you just said, which Love is it. really exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Sharks are my favorite animal, and so I, I remember. Away. <laughs> I remember you talking about how excited you got for Shark Week. So I that when I saw that name come out, I was like, that makes sense for her. That yes. <laughs> Yeah, anybody who knows me knows that, like, just I love sharks and shark facts, and I'm just, like, a nerd about it. I was actually talking to uh, my therapist this morning about, like, um, there's, like, a very close parallel universe to this one where, like, if I had ever gotten to go to, like, a real school ever in my life, I probably would have just ended up in some sort of, like, field biology work instead of music. Um. (laughs) But instead, I learned how the T-cell is shaped like a cross in college biology, which points to how uh, God made everyone. Oh, really? So wow. Now I, that's, yeah. So okay. here we are. Useful but, uh, knowledge. So yeah. yeah. You know, um, oh, so God. useful. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, I was kind of lamenting about how, like, I just kind of feel dumb all the time about stuff because I never learned anything real uh, except for music. Music is the only thing I ever feel like I actually got a real education on. And so that's kind of what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. So that is a band that I have really wanted to start for a long time, um, but never really felt like I had like a clear artistic direction for myself. Like I've written songs and I've performed my songs live, like just under my name. Um, for a while, kind of, but I just never felt like a lot of my like musical vocabulary was more like jazz or soul. But that wasn't really how I didn't really identify as a jazz musician or a soul musician. Um, as myself, an artist. Yeah. Um. So I never really felt connected to a lot of the music I was writing. Um, until honestly, Justin showed me like a lot of stuff about like the DIY scene and like pe- like guitar pedals and tone, and introduced me to a lot of kind of like the bands I mentioned before, um, mm-hmm. like just female fronted, more indie rock bands that I had never heard of before, 
And it just kind of like opened up my mind a lot to be like, oh, th- this is, these are people that are doing what I want to do. And like, there's a place that I can fit in and like yeah. helped me kind of like realize an artistic vision for myself that I did feel connected to. And so I was able to like rework some old songs to fit in this new like pathway and then also like wrote a bunch of new songs to, um, in like this style that really for the first time I like identified as myself or like sounding like me or like what I wanted to sound like um and so that is kind of how Bull Shark started and um yeah so I have five songs that I'm recording currently um and I've tracked drums for all of them and I just need to like get the arrangements done and like go back in the studio and do all the guitar bass vocal kind of stuff yeah. Um, but hopefully that will get done sometime this year. Um, yeah. I'm trying to not be too rushed on it. I want it to get out soon, but I'm trying to like make sure I can afford it and like I don't want to rush through it and put out a product I'm not like just yeah happy it, with. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that project that I'm working on. I'm very excited about. Yeah, I'm excited for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Divinely selected places have secrets and mysteries within them that cannot be explained, manifesting as hauntings, spectral entities, and supernatural energies, and are all found around the world in the most obscure corners. Unveil the best kept secrets of the world with Mysterious Adventures Tours. Immerse yourself in the mystical explorations of curated travel experiences handpicked by passionate ambassadors and guides. Brace yourself for an unforgettable journey that promises to carve out memories like no other. Satisfy your wonderlust by visiting MysteriousAdventuresTours.com to learn more about their future tours. It's time to tour the mystery and embark on an enigmatic odyssey that will leave you spellbound. Are there like specific artists and it doesn't have to be musicians either. Like, is there specific artists that just really inspire you? Like when you're just really like trying to get into creative mode or something and it's like, I don't know, like I'm going to tap into this person's board or whatever it is. Like, (laughs) is there any specific artists that just you really gravitate to that you connect with? Hmm. I feel like my favorite visual artist is probably Van Gogh. Mm Mm-hmm. I've always loved how like rough his paintings look, but just how like purely emotional they feel. And that that's always inspired me because I'm also a visual artist too. And so like the idea of like, it doesn't have to be anything. You can just make something. Yeah. And like he struggled a lot with like, manic depression and all these other things as like a person and had like a lot of challenges he was overcoming to like just simply exist but like the fact that even though he was like deeply sad and figuring all of that out in a time where like there was no real support for people with like mental illnesses or awareness at all you know but he still used like his art to express his feelings and to like work things out in like a very innovative and creative way that like and like looking at his life in general like he wasn't really recognized until after he died and so it's like you know the idea that like if I'm not feeling validated in some way or if I'm not feeling I don't know like I'm making a difference or like I'm doing anything it's like well, that doesn't mean I should stop trying or, like, stop making stuff because even if people don't appreciate it now or, like, if they are and I'm just, like, feeling down on myself or something, it's, like, doesn't mean that in the future somebody is going to, like, be helped by what I made or, like, that what I'm doing isn't going to make a difference or, like, an impact on the world or something just because I don't feel like it is right now, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and you don't, and you don't know who that is affecting, right? Like there could be, it could be just one person out there that happens to like mm-hmm. stumble upon your 
video on YouTube or a song on Spotify or something like that. And it's like, it just hits them the right way. And it's like, you somehow inspired or impacted them. And some, you know, that's all you need. Like if there's one person that you can connect with in this giant ass world that we live in, you know, right. to me, to me, that's worth creating stuff. So it's kind of like that same thing, like with him or what you were just saying, where it's like, just, just create, you know, just do it, you know? Yeah. 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 And it's like the process, I feel like sometimes the, the act of creating isn't, isn't necessarily just for the person who is creating it either. Exactly. Like, right. Like, you know, like it helps me to work out my feelings by writing songs, but it also can help other people or not help other people or whatever. It's like there's right. infinite possibilities of goodness to happen from creating something. And it's like, you know, pushing through all the like hard emotional work of like birthing these songs or paintings or whatever is like worth it because, you know, eventually it could really help someone, uh, kind of makes it worth it, you know? So yeah, he's definitely a big inspiration in that way. And musically, I really enjoyed like listening to a lot of like smaller bands or like, Honestly, like a lot of what I listen to is stuff that I'm learning, like my friend's music to play with them, which is also really inspiring because it's like I get to really be a part of my community in like an active way. And that inspires me to like remember that like success and the idea of success is so arbitrary and like you can really like, I don't know, it's like inspiring to me to like work to write and finish and record and put out songs of my own and like start a band and get people to play my music and people will come to shows and listen whenever I'm like doing that for other people that I'm friends with you know like I'm taking my time to like learn your songs play shows with you and it's like so much fun for me to be a part of your dreams becoming reality and it's like so I can also do that for myself, you know, yeah. is like inspiring me in that way. Um, and then like bands, like I was saying, a band called Wednesday. Yeah. Um, she, her name's Carly, is from Asheville, I think, North Carolina. And it's like, they're kind of blowing up right now, which is exciting. But like, I would love to, like, I don't know her personally. I would love to know her. Um, she seems so cool and fun. Uh, but it's like finding bands like that, that it's like, I would love for my band to be able to tour like opening for a band like Wednesday. Yeah. You know, and it's like learning, like learning different, like different avenues that I can fit in like different scenes and stuff has been also like really inspiring too. And seeing people like support her band and like one of my favorite shows that I've been to in a while um, was they played at um, the Basement East, which is a venue here in Nashville. Um, and it was like such a good show. Like the opener was called Cryo Geyser and they were so good. And Wednesday was so good and the energy was good. And the, I don't know, it was just like so fun and it was packed and yeah. everybody was into it. And it's like, this is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, that so, leads yeah. into my next question. Like what are you specifically working towards right now in your life? I, I feel like we've kind of touched on it a little bit, but like, what's, what's your focus? Is it like really just kind of like focusing on this aspect of like bull shark and, you know, creating this music for yourself, kind of playing for other people. Do you have kind of like a long-term goal in mind? Yes. I feel kind of like I sort of mentioned before, I feel like I have two separate parallel careers happening one as like an artist, as a bull shark, as a songwriter, trying to book shows, trying to, you know, do that whole thing, which is new for me. And then my other career is the one that I like went to school for and have been working on for the past almost 10 years in Nashville and as a bass player and, you know, making contacts and all that stuff and like getting gigs and making money and going on tours as a bassist with other people's projects. So I feel like those are kind of like my two parallel careers that have a little bit of overlap, but honestly, not that much overlap. 
Um, so for Bull Shark, I'd say my goals are definitely to like just fucking finish my album. <laughs> Uh, which will maybe happen before I die of old age. We'll see. And then, you know, get that out and hopefully play more shows and tour and get a band together and just play more um, and see where that goes. And then get contacts in that world, like the kind of indie rock DIY scene world. Yeah. Whereas most of my contacts I have now are like industry people, which is like good 10 steps from now in both our right. world, you know? So, but as far as like my bass playing is concerned, my, I would say my major goals are like finding a new sense of consistency in some way. Um, and like hopefully getting on with like a bigger signed artist or like a more successful indie artist that can kind of have me like maybe on retainer or something so I can have more steady income. But like, and it's like I'm not having to learn all this stuff all the time in order to pay yeah. my bills. I can just take gigs that sound like something I want to do for fun. Even if it pays only 50 bucks, you know, I can still afford the emotional time to like learn everything because it's like an artist I really like or a show that sounds really cool or like I really like the music or something. So I'm just trying to figure all that out now, I guess, that I'm... I've kind of like branched out on my own for the first time in a long time. Um, just trying to figure out like what that looks like for me, I guess, and like how I can put my goals into sentence form so that I can actually actively take steps to achieve those goals yeah. instead of just these like arbitrary, ah, need money, ah, like music, ah, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> So I feel like I'm I'm kind of in the process of figuring that out, I guess, more than to be able to communicate a clear goal path, you know? Yeah. Well, I and I know that this is a scary spot to be in, but I also feel like, you know, this is just such a really awesome moment in your life to really embrace because this is a moment where you're just being really self-aware and cognizant of yourself and what you're needing and feeling. You know what I mean? So it's like, this is just what I need in my life right now. Like I need to be doing this and I need to be creating projects and doing music like this and stuff like that. And yeah, all of these outliers are really freaking terrifying, but I still, I like, this is what I'm feeling I need to do. And I think that's just so important for those moments in our lives to just really give ourselves love in those situations, you know, and just really embrace ourselves and be so thankful for it, you know, because you, you could have just ignored that. You know, you could have just like stayed with that other artist because it was security for you and just like, ah, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to I'm going to do the grind, you know, make my money and, you know, call it a day. But you. Yeah. Yeah. You decided to uh, do your thing, girl. Yeah, I'm trying. My best. <laughs> I love it. I fully support it. <sighs> Thank you. So for listeners out there who might be needing some advice like inspiration regarding like whether it's picking up a hobby or tapping into a passion project what can you say to them i would say like no matter what you do or like what kind of person you are like whether you view yourself as a creative person or not a creative person like in a traditional way like i feel like everybody as something that makes them feel creative or like they are optimizing like their talents or doing something that just makes them feel so happy. Yeah. And so whether alive. that's, yeah. And like that to me, that feeling is your creativity. Yeah. So like whether that comes out as like visual art or music or painting or dancing or whether it comes out in like, solving a really complicated math equation or yeah whatever it is that you really love to do that just like makes you feel so good like to me that is your creativity and that is so important to feed in yourself because if you don't if you aren't like respecting that part of you that just desires to feel like happy or like fulfilled then like, what's the point of doing anything? 
Yeah, you know, like I feel I feel lucky that I get to do something that I really, really am passionate about as my job. So even on days where like I feel like I'm clocking in, clocking out, doing it for the paycheck, like at the end of the day, I still got to play music with my friends and I did right. have to sit in a cubicle somewhere. Right. Which is better to me than, you know, nothing. But like if you are like an office worker or something and that's not what makes you feel fulfilled, because I'm sure for some people they love it, taking the time to find out what makes you yourself and like what makes you unique and what makes you happy like whether it's gardening or having health plants or babysitting or being really shitty at painting but you still do it <laughs> yeah exactly me you instance, know yeah. yeah like you don't have to be good at, you don't have to be good at the thing that makes you feel happy yeah you just exactly. have to make sure that you're making yourself happy yeah just have because fun. like yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, I don't know, I would just encourage everybody to like, take the time because I feel like I've had so many people that like I grew up with or whatever that tell me, you know, you're really lucky for knowing what you wanted to do since you were a kid. I've heard that a lot too from people. And it's surprising to me. And I guess because you, you seem like the person kind of like me where we have so many interests that it's always weird when you hear from other people, it, I, I don't have any interests. How do you have all these like hobbies and stuff? Like what? Really? Yeah. Or like the one that I hear a lot is like, I, I'm lucky that I was good at something. Oh, really? because like I, yeah, like I've had so many people like my childhood best friend, for instance, like, she would always tell me like she wasn't good at anything like she wasn't talented in anything and she wasn't smart or she didn't feel smart and she didn't feel like she wasn't good at art she wasn't good at music she wasn't good at math or science she wasn't good at english she just felt kind of dumb and bad at everything was always envious that I had a passion that I was good at that I knew that I wanted to do that with my life and now I am doing it with my life and like, but it's like, she is a mother now, which is to me a talent and a skill that Absolutely. I don't yeah. like. <laughs> Same. And, yeah. you know, and it's like, she was, she went to school for early childhood education and was a teacher, uh, like a preschool teacher and like worked in daycares and stuff. And it's like, to me, that is like, I could never, like, I could literally never do that. And it's like, that to me is a passion and is like something that is a skill and a talent. And like, I don't have that, you know? And I, I always made sure that I was like, dude, you are really good at stuff. It's just maybe not stuff that you feel is conventionally viewed as a talent, you know? Like juggling right. is a talent, but motherhood is not like. right. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's like that to me is like something that she's just so intrinsically good at, you know, and that goes for like just parenthood in general. Like I know so many non-binary people and men that are also very nurturing people. And it's like that to me is a skill and a talent Absolutely. that like you can feel creative in, you know, like and that's what makes good teachers. Yep. And that's what makes good parents and that's what makes good like guardians and that's what makes good, you know, friends and that's what makes Absolutely. good people, you know? And so it's like, whatever it is that like you can feel creative in, it's like, it doesn't have to be conventional, but like figure out because there is something, I think everybody has something that they're very talented at and then just taking the time to figure, figure that out and like embrace it. And even if it's not what you would have picked to like maybe just try to figure out a way to like lean into your natural abilities. Well, honestly, we are at the end of the line, at the end of the road. Um, is there anything that you want to leave listeners with? Like, uh, I, I felt like what you just said was like really inspiring. <laughs> so that was great. <laughs> um, but if there's anything else that you just kind of want to talk to people about or let them know. I don't know. I guess my main my main things that I'm doing right now as far as like professionally are Bull Shark, which if you want to follow my Instagram, that would be helpful. 
and my bass playing page slash my just normal page too that is always welcomed uh and when they when they search what is the actual name like the handle my main page is at sissy dinkle s-i-s-s-y-d-i-n-k-l-e and then i have it linked from my profile or whatever but my other one is underscore underscore bull shark is what bull sharks page is um <laughs> love it yeah so yeah so that would be you know helpful for me because numbers and stuff matter which is dumb yeah objectively i've been thinking about trying to start maybe like a crowdfunding thing to be able to um afford to continue recording and get my album done sooner so um, i think that would be great yeah, so I think I'm going to try to do some research on that and maybe get one started soon. So that's something to definitely look out for. But if you follow my pages, like, you'll definitely see, like, if slash when I do that. But, yeah, any kind of support in that way would be helpful because, uh, like, we've talked about for the past hour, um, life is expensive and music <laughs> is unpredictable. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, any any monetary contribution would be very welcomed. Uh, yeah, I think those are all my plugs, I guess. And um, you and like on those accounts, you you'll post like your shows that are coming up. So if people happen to be in Nashville and they want to check you out, they can find a, find you at a live show. You'll post. Yeah, them. definitely. Mm hmm. Awesome. Okay, so this is just a random question. I know we're wrapping up, but to revert back, um, one thing I forgot to ask you was, do you have like a specific show that you can remember that like everything about it was just right? Like the crowd was right, the way you were jamming with the band, like it just all clicked. Like, do you have one that you just kind of reflect on occasionally? Yeah, I do actually. I have two shows. So with bass, like my favorite show, I think about it all the time, was um, I was in Spain and it was, I hadn't, so when I say I went to Berkeley earlier, I actually lived in Spain for that. Um, so I lived there for like a year and a half, but this is before and before I even graduated my undergrad or anything or knew I was going to move there, I was just there um, visiting a friend who lived there. And he's a drummer and one of my favorite drummers to play with and it was over new year's and we went to this new year he like kind of asked me like do you want to play a show for new year's and i was like yeah of Obviously. course i do <laughs> so it was him on drums beyond bass and then a guitar player and a keyboard player i'd never met before that i didn't speak spanish they didn't speak english and i was like cool is there like a set list are we going to have a rehearsal? And he's like, no and no. And I was like, are there songs? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we just show up and start making up music together. And we started playing at like 10 p.m. And I don't think we stopped until like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. No way. Oh, that's awesome. And we just played. And it's like we went into tunes. Or people would call stuff, but we were just like making music up together, like making songs. And it was like, I, I just felt like I transcended my body and I've like never played that way ever. And it was like the first time I felt truly creative yeah. on the bass. And it was like the coolest experience ever. Um, and there's some jams in Nashville that are like improv based and it's like so fun and you get to go and just like, you don't call tunes like at a jazz jam or something. It's just yeah. like you get up and you just like make stuff up together. Like somebody starts playing a groove or playing a chord progression and you just figure it out on the fly and make up stuff together. And it's like the most fun. Um, and then I just recently played in July. I played my first show ever as Bull Shark, um, which was all so awesome in like a different way. Um, because I just played solo. Um, yeah. It was just me, no band, and I'm not used to that as a bass player. I'm used to having at least one other person on stage with me, and I'm usually supporting them. And so it was like to be up on stage completely by myself, 
playing my own songs that I wrote about my own hard experiences in front of people was like crazy. I felt so seen and loved and supported. And I had so many friends come out. And like, when I say there were like 150 people in the room and you could hear a pen drop, and I'm talking about how hard it was coming out to my like religious family and just like spilling my guts and everybody is just like right there listening. And it's like only me. I can't fall back on anybody else. It's just like so exposed feeling, but it was like so beautiful. And I just felt so like in this time where I've been in this like big transitional period and I was so afraid to like step away from this project and jump out on my own. And I was like so scared if my community was going to catch me or not. And they did, you know, everybody's been so like, I felt so connected to my community here in Nashville for the first time. Maybe ever, but definitely in a really, really long time. Wow. And I feel like that really showed itself in my first show as my new band and just having so many people show up. And not only show up, but, like, really pay attention and, like, support me in, like, active ways. I don't know. It was just, like, I I don't know if I'll ever forget that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. And I love that for like just that first experience of just that vulnerability, like you were saying, just like with you just being on that stage and like, here it is, here it all is on my own. Here I go. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a really cool experience. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was really beautiful. Well, Sissy, thank you so much for doing this and yeah. let me just talk to you and interrogate you. I. <laughs> really, honestly, I just, I find what you do so inspiring and fascinating. I wish I could play freaking bass. Um, <laughs> cannot at all. Um, but I, I love, uh, you know, tuning into some of the videos that you post and just seeing and like seeing how much you have grown because, you know, I knew you a couple of years ago. Um, and I feel like I started seeing a shift when you started to play for Lydia. Cause it was like, you were starting to, you found someone that I felt like really got you and understood you. And it was like giving you opportunities to, to play. And so you were starting to come into yourself and then to just yeah. see that progression into where you are now. Um, it's really cool for me. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I really treasure having people that have, you know, been, in my life for as long as you have to be able to like, you know, it feels nice to have someone be able to like recognize your progress, you know? Yeah, actually. Yeah. So yeah, I appreciate you as well. Oh yeah, of course. Well, and Hey, yeah, I live in Belgium and you have a other friend that lives in Belgium. So please come yeah. visit anytime. I will. I really I, want to. Yes. I have a nice spare room that we've been working on. Currently it's where I'm podcasting, but it's fine. We'll move it. We'll move it out of the way. Yeah. When you I can sleep visit. on a podcast desk. It's fine. Love that. That's great. And then if you just want to record, it's fine. There's a mic there. Just, you know, go for yeah. it. I've got a cat you can snuggle with. So it's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, seriously, thank you so much for taking time and hanging out. And yeah, everybody can check Sissy out online. The links will be in the bottom of the description. And I'm excited to just keep an eye out, you know, if new things coming. And then if you have like a really big project coming up, like if you start your uh, crowdfunding and stuff, please send it my way. I'll definitely share it. And We'll support it and yeah. yeah yeah when your album comes out we can totally do another episode and just talk about it just like the songs and kind of the story behind them and that whole process yeah. i think that'd be really that'd cool be awesome yeah thank you kayla you're so welcome so much love yeah. to you yeah This podcast is brought to you by MindJunk Creative, a creative agency that creates brands and experiences rooted in visual storytelling. By exploring your MindJunk, MindJunk Creative is able to tap in and explore all of your wild ideas that you may have viewed as throwaways and use them to create engaging stories and experiences for your brands. 
What's your story? Go to mindjunkcreative.com and follow them on Instagram at It's Mind Junk. Let's give a huge shout out to Sissy for being an absolute freaking rock star guest. And hey, our first guest. So yay. Thank you, Sissy. After tuning into this episode, it is definitely clear that coffee and bass players truly make the world go round. Make sure to click the links in the episode description and show notes on our website at creativedunkpodcast.com to connect with Sissy on social media and explore her website. And don't forget to keep checking back on the website for all of the latest updates from the incredible guests that we feature on Creative Junk. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Find me on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or you know any of your go-to platforms. And leave me a review and share it with your friends. I seriously would be forever grateful. Also, if you have any thoughts on today's episode or must hear stories, hit me up at hello at creativejunkpodcast.com. You know that I love hearing from you all. Until next time, catch you later, folks. Did you love this episode? Well, let's continue the chatter on Instagram and Facebook. We can dish about the latest interview and catch up on all things, well, creative. Plus, check out creativejunkpodcast.com for show notes and other juicy resources to satisfy your creative cravings. Don't miss out on the fun. And hey, thank you for listening. Thank you.